day four, we're all headed out to get us some Gemsbuck. Hems, Hemsbuck. Hemsbuck is what South Africa calls them. But no, making people can say Hems, Hemsbuck. Hems, Hemsbuck. Better? Hems. Better? Hemsbuck. Hemsbuck? Not the same? No, but American people, they can call it however they want to. Oh, thank you. I love that guy. Now that we've got that straight, we're going to chase some Hemsbuck. And I am paired up with Thomas today. We're going to run way down in the Karoo with Arnold, our guide. And I'm so excited to show you this footage because it was an epic hunt. Frustrated of playing cat and mouse for a couple of hours, we set up a really cool drive. We get right in position, and before we know it, we've got these gemsbuck coming right at us. Now, gemsbuck are very difficult to judge because both the males and the females have horns. The younger males and females have a gray base, so you really want to get a good look before you pull the trigger. And as everything started to unfold in front of us, trying to decide which one to take, we just couldn't make a decision and we missed out again. These are the times you figure out what you're made of. You got to bear down, encourage one another, remind everybody this isn't it. It's not over. It's just a missed opportunity. You stick with it and you keep hunting. Nothing feels as good as the ones you earned. The first part hurts, but the second part you'll remember forever. Oh, <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, man. <laughs> God. Uh. Yeah. You want to tell me a story, Thomas? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> hey, the ones you work the hardest for, the ones that uh, mean the most, and you earned this one today, buddy. Yeah, thanks to these two guys and your help as well, right? For sure, man. No, it's awesome. It's a fantastic trophy. Hemsbuck. <laughs> Can you say Hemsbuck? Hemsbuck. <laughs> Beautiful. With literally no time to spare, Thomas made a perfect one-shot kill on an outstanding Gemsbuck. About the time we got that Gemsbuck loaded and started heading out of there, we got rained on like you would not believe which didn't matter to us because we were on cloud nine. Meanwhile, in South Africa, there is two other Gemsbuck hunts going on. Let's take a quick peek. Gemsbuck. 
Tim's buck. Tim's buck, sorry. Trigger man right there. The old man right there. Mahalo. This boy is freezing their ass off, been driving for three hours. Here's what I can tell you 100% for sure about hunting Gemsbuck. They are double tough. The hunt's tough, they got great eyesight, and anytime you add a variable like wind, rain, a camera guy, peer pressure, any of that stuff, it's almost impossible. So let's take a step back, watch Tim's Gemsbuck hunt, Here's a great visual representation of an emotional roller coaster. A 500 pound Gemsbuck will take that 100 grain bullet just like a bee sting. Physically and emotionally spent, they are back in position and Tim makes an extraordinary follow-up shot. Gems bucked down. Good work. Tough animal. Good job. Hey. <laughs> there we go, that's a love. <laughs> that was high pressure, brother. You made it happen when it counted, though. Right there, you made it happen. 232 yards. If you've seen enough hunting, you're familiar with the emotional highs and lows of hunting. As they stand around this gim's butt taking a look, it takes a minute for it to all soak in and be happy for a job well done. Meanwhile, in South Africa, Paul was hunting a gim's buck as well. His died off in a canyon, and they had to cut a trail in with the truck just to get to him. All I know is I wound up seeing four Gemsbuck hit the dirt, and every single one of them was a fight to the bitter end. Congratulations, boys, on an epic day four. Three Gemsbuck and a Kudu Bull. Bob, I am running out of nicknames. Early morning Bob, first thing in the morning Bob, crack of dawn Bob. I don't care how you stack it, the morning is the time you need to be hunting because you just wake up and get it done. Let's take a look at your Gemsbuck. <laughs> Uh, my bad, Ollie. That's right. Hemsbuck. Can you see him walking, Bob? Yep, yep, yep. I'm okay, He's when away. he stops and gives you a shot, take him. Hey! Okay. High shoulder. Right there. Roller, baby. <laughs> Reload. Just stay with it. You've hit it hard. That's a good shot, Bob. Well done, sir. You never know how things go. That 375 punched that Gems buck hard. He went down, gathered himself, and before we knew it, he was over the ridge, working his way down the valley. Come to find out, after looking at the footage and putting our heads together, that bullet went right in the withers, the place between the spine and the top of his lungs. These are the times you find out who you're hunting with. The Tam family, Peter and Steven, the two professional hunters that we worked with, were on it. Peter got a hold of Steven, Steven found a high ridge, located that Gemsbuck, they kept tabs on him, and before long, Bob was back in position and makes a great shot through the trees. 
huge Hemsbuck down. That Hemsbuck has got two bullets in him, four inches apart. The difference between life and death. Congratulations, Bob, on a monster Hemsbuck. What better way to segue into a Hemsbuck European skull video than to see four hunts in South Africa? That's good fortune. So I get back in the States and a good friend of mine says, hey, I drew an Oryx tag in New Mexico and just harvested a really nice male. Would you Euro it? So the reason I pulled out day four from the previous films is so I could do this video and show you. So, typical skull video. First things first, you gotta get it skinned. My son had a friend of his that came over and really wanted to see this. So we sat down and skinned this Hemsbuck or Gemsbuck or Oryx, all the same critter together. And the only thing you wanna be really aware of is when you get around the horns, remember it's made of keratin. So in a lot of ways that hair is kind of growing into that thing. Leave you as much hair as you need. When you slide that horn off the horn bone or the core of that thing, it'll all separate naturally. So leave yourself plenty of length. The bottom of that horn is very, very soft. So you can cut it and lose quite a bit of horn. Typically, I skin things pretty fast and pretty aggressive because most of that hide is waste. If I was gonna skin it, so I was gonna mount it, I'd have to really take my time. But when you're doing a new animal for the first time, it's important to be a little bit delicate. Even though I've done lots of horned animals, I've never done a Gemsbach. So be careful around the horns, make sure you get everything skinned real well. One of those important moments that is easy to overlook is the time you take to teach a young person who is interested in hunting or skinning or preserving meats. You got plenty of time in your day, just pause and let them get in there, let them get dirty. It may just be the thing that encourages them to be a good, respectful sportsman. Hand on where you're pulling it. So it's already done? Yeah, so that's that. So this is essentially the mask. It's kind of gross, but it's a reality, right? That yeah. that little that little section right there is pretty cool. Moving along, y'all. We've got the hide off. We're gonna remove a bunch of tissue as much as possible. We're gonna pull the eyes out, remove the lower jaw, just get it stripped down nice and clean. Then we're gonna fill a pot with water, just above those horns a little bit bring it to a boil so we can work them free and get those horns off. First things first, no chemical in the water when you're boiling those horns. We want this to happen naturally, fast and fresh. Something else to note on horned animals, it is really easy to get right and left mixed up. So it's a good idea when you have very similar horns Put a piece of tape and a little marker to show the right and left horn so when you go to put them back on, naturally you're putting them in the right position. Okay, once that animal is in the pot and it's come to a boil, I mean immediately when it comes to a boil, I turn it down, pull it out, and then I just hold and twist those horns right off. They should come right off just like you're pulling the sheath away from a knife. Same exact principle. I was kind of surprised to see the little growing tissue on the inside. It was kind of dangly, a little nasty looking, but cool nonetheless. 
So I put the skull back in the pot to continue the boil. I cut the horn bone down. Give it about 10, 15 minutes. Again, the rule of thumb. Once the tissue on the top of the nose or the top of the head starts to split, we're ready to start power washing. For those of you that ask the questions, I use a little 110 electric, 1600 PSI, just real generic power washer from Lowe's or Home Depot, even Ace Hardware, anywhere you would find a power washer. I buy this one for 99 bucks. Wash the horns real easy with just a rinse to get dirt and debris off and then start power washing that skull. Those of you are gonna laugh at me, but make sure every hole, every orifice, everything that's got tissue in it goes away. I will also stick a screwdriver in the ear butts, right in the ear canal, and I pop out that little ear bone area visually from the front. You do not know the difference, but it's the best way to clean in and behind that ear area. If you don't take it out, you can't guarantee that it's clean. Washy, washy, washy. Get her clean. Okay, last boiling step. I take 50% peroxide, 50% water, I mix them in a pot and bring that pot to a full boil with everything that I want to whiten in the pot. At that point, I pull it out, rinse it good, and I like to put the bone pieces or teeth or anything that's come out that needs to dry together, I like to put it back in now that way when it dries, it'll be nice and secure. The bone when it's hot coming out of the boil is nice and malleable. It can slide together and when it dries, will look very, very natural. Okay, y'all, that Gemsbuck is dry. First things first, I'm gonna mop and glow the skull and I'm gonna mop and glow the horns in and out and let it dry. This mop and glow is going to seal everything up nice. It's not going to put much of a sheen on it at all. If I put two coats on it, it would start to develop a little bit of a shine. I'm just going to put one coat to kind of lock that porous bone in. And give it like a real nice light smell. I'm still learning, still growing. I don't know how many skulls I do a year, three or four hundred. I'm still learning. I don't ever want to be the guy that knows it all, because I surely don't. If you'll remember, those horns were kind of soft. The bases were just kind of soft, and they're dry now and it's just the bottom that's just as rigid as anything like a rock i want that mop and glue to get in there and seal everything you can brush it brush it brush it till it foams that won't dry with the foam on it uh, and if you're concerned about the foam you can just take a rag and wipe it off there but it'll just all soak in My two cents on the mop and glow is that it is just sealing things. It's all it's doing. So if there's any sort of odor or growth or anything inside that horn, I feel like I just sealed it. If anybody knows a really good product that you could put on horns, not antlers, but horns like this. I would love to know what it is. Just looking at it generally, I, I feel like like a heavy wax polish would be ideal. I've always used my often glow, but if there was something else, you know, especially on a on an animal that's maybe younger where there's still some growth, I would really like to take like a I don't in my head I think like a 
like a rouge or or something that I could actually put on a, on a flat buffer wheel and polish these horns. Uh, if anybody's doing that, shoot me a comment. I'd love to know what it is. As I continue, I still uh, I want to thank everybody for all the kind comments and words and encouragement. There's always people who hate me because they think I'm the devil for preserving critters. But the fastest way to fail is trying to please them all. If they just understood the benefits to good game management, there would be no problem. But you know the truth is, they don't want to know. They don't want to be educated. They don't want to be told the right thing to do. They want to be able to push back. And for that, fine. Right, left. All right, she's clean. She's mop and glowed. Now we just got to adhere the horns back on. I'm going to use Van Dyke's epoxy, I think it's called epoxy bond. Uh, you can use Bondo. I've used it for years. Whatever you want to put those horns back on, slide them on dry and test it, and then put them back on with the adhesive. It's going to look beautiful. All right, now that I've got them on there, I'm going to set it in front of a fan, let it dry overnight. I was so proud of myself because I remembered to come back and record this one piece. I stood up in front of the camera, put it on a plaque, did this whole thing, never had the mic plugged in. So it's going to look like one of those translated films. In short, what I'm saying here is thank you for watching my film. Hooray for Hemsbuck. And till next time. You know what we call a Gemsbuck in America? What? We call it an Oryx. Oryx. American people, they can call it out if they want to. Oh, thank you.